So again, my name is David Pletus. I'm the founder and CEO of Better Cloud. Um, I'm not going to talk about Better Cloud. I'll talk about it for one second here, um, and then I'm going to get into my presentation, which is more about the industry and the market and where, where we see things going. Um, so Better Cloud is an IT management security suite for cloud applications, specifically Google Apps Office 365. We're expanding that to support dozens, if not hundreds, of SaaS applications. Um, but right now, that's, that's the focus, is Google and Office 365. We have about 50,000 customers, um, companies using the product in 130 countries. Been around for four years, about 120 person company, raised about $50 million so far. Um, and a big focus of ours is just understanding this industry, understanding where it's going, um, and leveraging the reach that we have across all these customers to, to do um, a, a lot of surveys, um, a lot of data collection, a lot of data analysis, and so I'm gonna share a lot of that with you today. So I don't, I don't think I have to pitch it here. Everyone is moving to the cloud. The paradigm is shifting. Um, this is happening for all size organizations, small, large, um, all over the world, all industries. Uh, it's, it's occurring. And I, and I think it's actually, the, this, this shift is going to be the biggest shift and, and is, that is going on right now is probably the biggest shift that's going to happen for the, next, for the last 20 years and for the next 20 years. Um, and, and so there's a lot of opportunities. And, and there's opportunities being created in, in all segments for customers, which we're going to talk about, um, for for ISVs, for, for technology companies, which is most of the people I think in here, um, and then as well for, for channel partners and resellers, which which is part of the audience as well. So those are the three groups that we're going to talk about. Just from my background and, and why why should, should you even care about what I'm saying? Um, which you may not anyway. But um, so my background, I started my career at a company called Vocalocity. Um, I ran that business for about six years and went from uh, zero to about 12,000 uh, small businesses using the product, 35 million recurring revenue, 200 person company, it sold to Vonage, it became Vonage Business Solutions. Um, and so that was all micro SMBs, average size about 10 users. And, um, and, and that, was, that was early, so that was before the word cloud, before SaaS even, it was called a hosted PBX originally. Um, and so started there. I went to Cloud Sherpas to create their SMB practice. Cloud Sherpas is a large uh, Google Apps reseller. Has now, well, it was just acquired by Accenture, but but expanded past there. When I got there, it was an enterprise business. We created the biggest SMB practice for Google Apps in a year. Um, from we had, and, and the size customer went from Vocalocity around 10 users to about 55 users on average when I was at Cloud Sherpas. So I experienced that built a $5 million business in, in about 12 months. So we understood, I, I, that's a kind of a little bit larger, not micro, but still SMB for sure. Um, and now Better Cloud, where we have probably 25,000 SMB customers using the product. Um, and, and so we've seen, we've seen that spectrum. I've seen that spectrum. And, and it's, it's becoming very clear what's happening in this space. So first of all, um, so this is from our last survey. Um, if you'd like to look at this, we. We surveyed our database about 100,000 IT professionals or, or let's say users of, of our product and users of Google and Office 365. And we looked at, we asked the question of when do you believe that, when, when will your IT infrastructure be 100% in the cloud? Um, and what you can see is that SMBs, uh, oh, everyone's moving there, obviously, um, but SMBs are much faster to get there. There's a larger percentage of them already there, so that's the yellow line. Um, so if you're interested, you can look at, we have, uh, we've published a lot of uh, information about this, bettercloud.com slash trends. Um, and so this is, you know, they're, they're moving 100% to the cloud. And what's happening is that the, the environments are not these homogenous environments that have existed for a long time. I think this is a very important slide is that it's no longer just, I'm going to have Exchange with Office, with SharePoint, with a PBX from you know some Siemens or whoever it may be, you know now it's it's these very heterogeneous environments where you have all types of SaaS applications um, being used, and and really it's best best of breed, and we're seeing this, and especially when you start talking about these these small companies, you you see some the the newer companies that are starting up today, they may have um, 12, 15, 20 SaaS applications in their environment. We today at Better Cloud, we have 120 people, we have 94 SaaS applications that we use. Um, now, of course, we're a technology company, we're all cloud, but it's not that, you know, you're seeing this in all industries, again. And so people are not, they're no longer looking at just, hey, I'm going to have this, this single, I'm going to get everything from Microsoft, and I'm just going to 
roll that out, whether it's the best or not the best, I'm, I'm just, you know, blindly going to roll that out. It's becoming a competitive advantage to go out and, and start picking up these best in breed solutions and start tying them all together, which is a lot about what this group is about, you know, is, is these open APIs and connecting everything. And most of these applications that you see are connected to each other in some way. Um, and, and for SMBs and for companies in general, this is, everyone's becoming technology enabled. And, and the, um, the selection of SaaS applications, the integrations of those SaaS applications is becoming a competitive advantage for people. Um, and we, we saw this in our most recent survey. Um, just if you look at people using more SaaS applications, you see that they, they rank their companies as being more collaborative as they've added more SaaS applications, uh, more innovative, uh, more productive. And so this is occurring, and I think it's occurring faster and faster and faster as these environments are switching um, and, and as, they're, as people are spin, putting in the best in breed solutions. So specifically for ISVs, which is, again, who most of the people in the room are, um, we're seeing that, that this is from a Cloud Technology Alliance survey that we did in 2014. We're seeing that people are actually willing, end users are willing to pay for their own applications to be more successful at work. Um, and this, for me, I, I was actually surprised by these results. I, I knew that you know, everyone talks about shadow IT, everyone talks about bring your own application, bring your own devices, but it's, it's amazing that a, a majority of people answering our survey, we had thousands of people answering the survey, the majority of end users, and these are salespeople, these are customer support people, these are uh, project managers, they're actually using, they're actually paying their, their own dollars out to, to, to buy SaaS applications that make them more successful at, at work. So this was, um, this was very interesting data, and, and I think when we started digging into what are these SaaS applications, you're seeing that some, some companies are actually targeting these, these, uh, these end users and have been very successful with that. Um, so two examples that, this is just from my, this is my own experience what we've heard from customers, but two very good examples are Expensify and Slack. Um, at Cloud Sherpas, we just did, when I got there, it was still old way of doing expense reports and, and then someone told me, one of the salespeople said, oh, when you go on your next trip, try this Expensify thing. And I started using it, and I submitted my, my, my expense reports, and all of a sudden, you know, I told the next person on my team and the next person, and before you know it, Expensify is being used by almost the whole company, and then the accounting department says, well, we should probably just move to Expensify. Um, and th there's a lot of examples like this. Slack it, it, at Better Cloud, and we are obviously, again, big believers in the cloud, all cloud, and we had three separate instances of, of Slack going on inside of Better Cloud. Um, which I would have bought it anyway, but people just, you know, people just started implementing it. When we had our customer summit um, a couple, couple months ago, we saw that um, there were about 90 people there, 90 different customers, different sizes, everything else. About 80% of the people in the room had Slack somewhere in their environment. Not necessarily rolled out on purpose, but somewhere in the environment they had Slack. Um, and so I think you start seeing that. You see that with, with companies like Yesware. Um, you see it with companies like Sarah's Insight, who's here. You see it with companies. You see it where people, salespeople, are are figuring out these solutions and, and implementing them. In our case, Slack was being used by our release team uh, on our on our engineering team. They just set it up themselves, found that it was more efficient for themselves. In that case, it was free. Um, but I think that this approach is is happening more and more. And again, with SMBs, I think this approach works very well. If you if you saw what Dropbox did. With Dropbox Enterprise, again, they're saying focus more on larger, but in reality, they're mostly small customers. Um, they have a very cool feature where it can it, they can tie together all the individual accounts that are out there with your company domain name. So if you want to upgrade to an enterprise account, they've built a really cool feature that says one of the one of the features of enterprise is we can go and grab all the accounts that have ever been created with your corporate domain, and we can tie it all back together into this enterprise account versus Slack where we had to recreate it, shut down the other ones. So there's some interesting things that you could do as an ISV to make this transition easier, um, to make it frictionless. Um, and I think that this is, to me, this is probably from a marketing perspective, one of the biggest opportunities is to, to figure out, and again, each product is different, each product, but to figure out how to go uh, kind of from, from the ground up, you know, and, 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 and build that grassroots following from within an organization because that becomes very powerful and really hard to, to turn down if you're, if you're managing that organization. 
Um, we saw one, one company that was at our summit was Warby Parker. They had a very interesting uh, way of dealing with this, which is they put in, they like shadow IT, and they put in something they called OPP, which is Open Pilot Policy. Um, and anyone in the organization can pilot any SaaS application, and they have some set of rules, some kind of analysis that they have to go through, and then they present it to a board and say, this is why I need Slack for my team, and this is why I want it to be rolled out. And in their case, they had Slack in one part of the organization, HipChat in another part of the organization, and it was just whatever worked for them. I found, you know, these are the things that are happening more and more, um, and you're seeing it. And, and this is the opportunity with SaaS, this is the opportunity with freemium products. It's easy to get that kind of adoption. And again, from my previous slide, end users want to do their job better. They don't want to be held back. We know, we know that, right? They, they want to somehow connect. Again, I'll use Sirius or Yesware as an example. They want to somehow have Salesforce and Google Apps connected. Um, and it's just it's not available natively, and it makes them probably 20% more efficient. So they're going to go find that for themselves because they can drive more sales and make more money, and so they're going to figure that out. Um, and so there's opportunities for ISVs. And then the channel partners. Um, so, you know, I think... So, so we work with a lot of channel partners. We work with about 250 or so worldwide. Um, these are Google partners. These are Microsoft partners, again, specifically right now for us. Um, but we have a lot of experience working with these channel partners. And I came from Cloud Sherpas, where um, we built this SMB practice. And Cloud Sherpas is probably one of the most successful cloud or in the cloud uh, channel companies in the world. And for me, I believe, I, at a high level, I actually believe it's like a gold rush right now for channel partners. That's, that's my personal belief. If I wasn't doing better cloud, I'd, I'd probably be doing that. Um, and specifically an SMB channel part. Because uh, when you, we've so done a lot of research on this as well. We found that no matter how we survey our customers, no matter how we survey people, we come out to about 100 employees to one IT person. That, that seems to be the average, no matter how we do it. And when we've done it, it keeps coming back to that number. I've talked to VCs, they have that same number. It seems to be the number that we're, we're, we're finding is that for every 100 employees, there's one IT person. Even smaller companies, you know, it's probably not until 70, 60 something, 70, 80. So sub that number, who's gonna do, who's gonna enable these companies? These companies need to become technology enabled. Who's gonna enable them? It's, it's the channel partners. It's, it, those are the experts that people are looking to. And the opportunities is huge because that transformation has just begun. That slide that I showed, Yes, SMB is the most forward thinking. SMB is going to be the most, you know, moving the fastest to the cloud. But at the same time, there's still huge opportunity to be that, that consultant, that partner in that process and actually take those customers to the cloud and then live with them there for the next decade um, and help them implement these dozens of SaaS applications, help them integrate these, help them uh, roll them out, change management, training, all of that. I, Personally, I believe that it's, I really do think it's like a gold rush. If you look at the CSP program that Microsoft released, if you look at some of the changes that Google has been making to their partner program, there is an opportunity for people to make a lot of money. Um, and you, in the past, five years ago, if you look at the Born in the Cloud partners, it was very hard because there weren't that many uh, reseller programs available for people to make recurring margin. Now most, not all, but most SaaS companies will have some kind of program like that. If you can attach $5,000 worth of SaaS products into a single user at an SMB, and you've got 20 users there, you start adding up, those numbers start adding up very, very quickly. $3,000, whatever you want to look at in terms of the SaaS spent per employee in an SMB, you start attaching all of that and start making that recurring revenue, that starts to add up very, very quickly, and they're not going to go somewhere at what it doesn't make sense. If you're the one who's helped them implement it, if you're the one who's helped them <coughs> integrate it, if you're the one who's done all that work, they're not going to. Re they're going to keep coming back to you. And so the opportunity, in my opinion, the opportunity to build a big recurrent revenue business exists here. Two examples, which are um, mostly mid-market and enterprise, but again, both cloud servers <coughs> and New Signature have SMB practices. Um, these two companies, one in the Google space, one in the Microsoft space, have built big businesses. Um, so again, Cloud Sherpas was acquired by Accenture, New Signature just raised a bunch of money. Um, there, there is an opportunity, and there's, um, there's, such, there's so many partners out there that are based in an old world, an old way of doing things, and have to kind of cannibalize their business. That if you can be forward thinking, if you can, if you can take those steps, if you can, um, 
if you can drive towards this cloud first thinking and you can do it faster um, and you can bring that expertise in house, I, I really do believe as a channel partner, it's, it's, uh, it's a big opportunity because everyone else is going to be lagging. If you look at the 600,000 or whatever crazy number of partners Microsoft has, if you look at you know, the Cisco partners, these guys are going to take a long, long, long time to change. And if you can be forward thinking and move faster, um, we're seeing it today. We've seen it with the partners who are doing this today. Uh, they've been extremely successful. They're building these big customer bases or at least big revenue bases where they're making recurring revenue and then they have their services that they, they can layer on top. So I'm just going to go back to the slide, which is that we're still just the beginning. And I would argue that if you look at our database and you look at our customers, we obviously, again, have the customers that are already on Google, already on Microsoft, already, you know, they're already thinking this way. So this, this probably isn't even representative of the whole. The opportunity is, is probably even much, much larger for, for, the, for the general population of SMBs. But just this customer base of hundreds of thousands of, of organizations, um, the, it's happening. It's happening quickly. And we're reaching this kind of uh, this, this tipping point where, and, and I think you see it again, I'm going to repeat Google and Microsoft because that's where we spend a lot of our energy. But that's at the bottom of this cloud stack, if you will. And so once people make that, that's like the gateway drug into the cloud. Once they decide, okay, I'm off of Exchange, I'm onto the cloud, then it just becomes a matter of, okay, what else can I connect to this? How else can I connect Salesforce with this? What do I do for accounting? Because by the way, why should I keep, why, why should I keep these servers here? Why should I keep paying these software licenses? So th this is occurring. Again, I, I'm preaching to the choir a little bit, but. Um, but we have data backing all of this up. We've seen this for years. We're seeing the adoption of these suites increase year over year. We survey the same people every year and ask them how they're adopting these suites. It's, it's occurring, um, and the opportunity is for everyone, from the, the customer to the, to the technology partners to the channel partners, and it all really needs to work in concert in order to be, to be very successful. Um, so I promised you I'd go very quickly, so there you go. Um, <laughs> any questions? I mean, my question is probably really annoying because you know the agencies, all these people come up with percentages of how many people are converting and all that. But you seem to be somebody who's really in the front line. Like, what's your sense of, of the conversion of companies that have two world that are going to cloud? Uh, so, like I, I think that um, so the way I, I have to take a step back. The way that I look at this, it, when I said the cloud stack before, it's kind of like a a step pyramid, if you will. At the very bottom, you have you have messaging collaboration. There's only two players, really, Google Apps and Office 365. The reason that's at the bottom of the pyramid is 100% of people in an organization pretty much have an email. I mean, everyone has an email address. Um, on top of that, we see CRM as the next step up in that pyramid. And CRM, we, we've seen is attached to uh, across our tens of thousands of customers, we see that about 50% of users in an organization, on average, have CRM licenses. But in CRM, there's Salesforce, and then there's a huge, huge population, uh, very segment, segmented market. And then you go a step up, and you have you start getting into ticketing and help desk and, and such, and now you're at 20% of an organization who are using licenses there. Now you go a step up from that, and you end up in accounting, HR, and so it's this step pyramid, of kind of the cloud stack, and if you go down the stack, you have infrastructure as a service. So, I think that, that 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 foundational layer is where you're seeing that adoption, and I actually believe um, that Google, this is a bigger philosophical question, but Google kind of pushed the envelope with releasing Google Apps, forced Microsoft to at some point make a move, and, and now what has occurred in the last year is that Microsoft has gotten very serious, taking their entire company, taking their entire channel, and pointed them to selling cloud. So I, I believe that it's actually that the cloud adoption has been held up by Microsoft's lack of attention or lack of focus or lack of support of their cloud platform. And you see it now, obviously, that's no longer the case. And so I believe that in 2016, it's going to be a little bit of 16, 17, the floodgates are going to open because now their exchange customers are being forced, forced to buy 365. Once they buy that, and now they're at that foundation. They can move to Google. Google customers can move to them. They can move up the stack, down the stack. But they need to have some foundational piece in there. And so I think that Microsoft Switch, Satya Nadella coming in, all those changes that have occurred are, are actually going to open up the opportunity for everyone because they have so many customers locked into these exchange and you know office and all that. So, 
So that's why, so I think it's happening. It's going to accelerate in the next two years, I think, because of that, you know, dynamic. Uh, well, the number is on those slides. I, I can, if you go to the, that blog post has a lot of information. We have probably six blog posts that have cut all the information, and um, you'll probably find some. Yeah, but I won't, I won't uh, not like dark now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, we have a question, which is actually set up for the uh, panel later in the <laughs> afternoon. But uh, so you said resellers are hard, are, are, are struggling to switch. Uh, but some of them have. Uh, or have they? Are, are these totally new companies like CloudTrip? I think they're completely new and native to the cloud. They did not transition. Uh, are people transitioning? And if so, what, what do you think is helping some resellers transition? How do you get more resellers to, to transition? So, um, so the, the partners so far that have been extremely successful, not all, but most of them have been born in the cloud partners. So most of them have been partners that were started with the idea that this is the business model that they're going to go after. Um, the partners that are uh, that have been around for a while that are transitioning and being successful are the ones that are, I would say, ripping the band-aid off and saying, this is a different business model. I need to change who potentially is selling my services because I can't pay them the way I did before. I need to think about my business model differently because now it's on recurring revenue. I'm not getting paid up front. There's a lot of those pieces, and I think that's what's holding people back. So the answer is, a lot of the most, the most successful, I would say, in this market have been born in the cloud partners who have created a business that can support those kinds of economics. And the ones, and the reason it's been hard is because it is different. I mean, when you go from selling something and getting paid tens of thousands of dollars up front for selling a Cisco PBX with an exchange server with this, with that, with the other thing, and now you have recurring revenue and you have to wait a year, 12 months, you actually, as a, part, as a reseller, your business starts looking like a SaaS company. You start doing the MRR calculations. You start doing LTV CAC. You start do, that's what we that's what we did at Sherpas, and you have to be in that mindset that you're actually a SaaS company. You have to start looking at churn, negative churn. How do you do net ads? How do you do this? And there's still obviously a huge services component, but you have to figure out a way because the the big opportunity is to build a huge recurring revenue business that changes the dynamic tremendously. Now you have something that can last for a very long time. So it's happening. Um, and I think that it could be happening faster than it is. Um, but uh, once there's a couple of big successes or, or kind of case studies that are out there, I think it, it's going to force people to, to change. Okay, I love that so Microsoft's bringing their channel resellers in uh, finally. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of crash within that channel for the resellers uh, to get their head in the game. Are there any beacons of light? Like, where would you go if you're trying to figure this out within that channel? Yeah, I was a Microsoft reseller. Where would I go for advice on how to move? Uh, so the question is, if you're in the Microsoft channel, where do you go for advice if, if you want to uh, move? Uh, that that's a, um, that's a good question. Uh, I I don't know that there's that much out there right now. I mean, they they released the CSP program, which is really all about cloud, um, and. They're pushing people to get there. I'm not sure that they're providing a lot of good guidance of how to do that because I'm not sure that Microsoft themselves know what that's going to look like. So um, that's a tough, I, I think the answer is uh, not, I don't know. If anyone else knows? Then. <laughs> First of all, thank you for your facts. It's very invaluable as a cloud service provider. Myself, I was hired very recently to make a point cloud. That 104 stat is very I thought it was actually quite a bit lower, but that's what we did. But, um, are you seeing the services part, business model of the services part, forgetting about the recurring revenue, the way that services are delivered and charged for change? Um, so where I've seen success personally, and then where I think, and there's some people here in the audience who I think have seen similar success, is as a board in the cloud partner, for me at least, the services is important. It's still high margin. It's still an important piece of the puzzle because you need to do that work. But trying to simplify it so that it's much, um, there isn't this long, especially SLV, <laughs> where there isn't this long SOW, you productize your services basically. And so I think being able to do that across the entire board and say, these are the services we offer, they're products, choose one, go with it. Like that for me, the speed and like that allows you to get real uh, momentum versus every single time writing an SOW for $7,000 services, 
project to say, here's our $5,000 package, our $10,000, our $20,000, ultra, you know, move to the cloud, whatever those things are, but productizing those services, I think goes along with the mindset that people are in versus these bigger, so, I, so the answer to the question is yes, because the service is actually, the benefit of having that, and the reason that one of the cloud partners may not have to raise as much money or do as much, is because the services actually enables you to get that recurrent revenue. If you're a SaaS company, it takes a long time to get your current revenue to the point where you're profitable. If you're a services company, you can basically just fill in the gap where you can get build this recurrent revenue. Five years down the road, you look at it, you're doing $10 million in recurrent revenue, but you've actually bridged that gap with services the whole way through. And so I think it's a very important piece of it. I, I should have said that before, but it's the productization of that, making that high velocity, high volume, easy to upsell those, those products, if you will, down the line. Um, and that's what's going to enable you to build a huge recurrent revenue stream uh, because it's, it's high margin and, and it kind of bridges you in, those, in that period. But to what extent then is the channel partner a business consulting partner as opposed to the technology partner? And is there, like what I'm saying is, is it enough just to say here are the different products we think are good or is it enough, to, or is there a value add to say, this is what I have to figure out internally actually. Is, is it enough, is it, so really what customers, especially small businesses, are looking for is to understand where the business model opportunities are to modernize the way they, they operate as a customer. As a, as the a latter. Company. I think that's a huge opportunity. That's like the holy grail if you can get there and you can be trusted like that. It's just hard to, it's hard to get there. It's hard. To, but if you can show someone how implementing Dropbox or Slack or expensive, you know, even these small applications, if you can show someone how that's going to save their, their team this much time or make them this much more productive or make them, you know, I had a customer say to me, it was a great quote where a customer said, the reason that they moved to the cloud and they were doing, big, this was a bigger customer, but they said, the reason they're moving to the cloud is because they want to drive collaboration in their organization. They want to drive collaboration because that drives innovation and the innovation drives business growth. That was great. That was like a great way to put it. And I think being able to go into a business and explain that to them, but show them that you can do that for them then they can never get rid of it. I mean, then, then you're doing it forever. Then you're figuring out how to up, build their verticals, maybe go you know, sub, uh, contract it out to get them to build an application for them custom. To, you know, so there's the latter is where I would focus my energy. It's just uh, that, that takes time to build that trust you know, up with the customer. What about security? I mean, I think one of the things I see a lot of people are nervous um, so, you know, we, so what we do is provide that, that, that security, a better cloud. Um, but most of those things that are happening, most, most of those breaches, most stuff that is actually in legacy environments. Um, it's actually not in cloud environments. And if you look at it, the security that exists for Google or Microsoft, just again, those examples of Google Apps or Office 365, that security is better than any anyone could implement in their own legacy. I mean, it's a, they, that's what they focus on. So that security is very strong. Now, the issue around cloud is a lot more, in my opinion, around user behavior. It's a lot more of insider threats. It's it's not resetting the password. It's leaving this open in a browser. It's and so that's a different. It's a different type of security problem. But there are a lot of companies. There's better cloud, but there are an unlimited number right now of companies trying to 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 solve that cloud security problem. Um, but as a just the infrastructure itself that that these cloud providers offer in general, at least the big ones, is much better than anyone could ever ever build themselves. Um, and so so most of those breaches are, are actually not cloud-based breaches. 